Hello, welcome to another video on GProms. Today, we'll look at a batch reactor where we have multiple reactions taking place. So there's a complex scheme of reaction occurring, and that involves five components that are identified as A, B, C, and D. So this is the um, set of reactions taking place. So the first reaction here is reversible. So that's why this is will be treated as two reactions. The forward reaction will be one reaction, and the second and the backward reaction will be another reaction. So here, two reactions here, three and four, which means there are four reactions in total. Now that's why you have uh, four reactions here. So this should be reaction four, not four A. Now here is the, the stoichiometric uh, coefficient of um, the component in for each reaction, okay? Then, Now the reaction rate expressions are given here. So R1 is given by that, R2, R3, R4. This is for reaction one, reaction two, reaction three, and reaction four. So you have the kinetic the kinetic rate constants here, the volume of the reactor, then the initial mode of A and the initial mode of B are given. So the model equation. So we have these two equations. The the, the, the time derivative of the mode equals the volume multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients in for component I in reaction K multiplied by the rate of reaction K. Okay, so there are four, there are four reactions there. Now to solve it, we need to do a, um, a degrees of freedom analysis. And for here we have this, for the first reaction, um, there are NC, um, for, for the first equation rather, they have NC equation because we have N, the and i, which means we have to write this equation for the number of i's that we have. So, which is the number of components. So, here the number of components is five. So, this is basically five equations. So, it's nc equations. And how many variables do we have here? We have ni, here we have v, um, and we have um, rk. Okay. Then, So that's, uh, sorry, V, V is not a variable. V is a parameter. So this is an, an error. So ignore that V. So it should be NI and RK. So because V will be declared as a parameter is given. And um, um, so there will, this will be NC equations and uh, number of variable will be NC, which is for this, plus NR, which is for this, because K represent the reaction. So NC plus NR variable, so V should be ignored, okay? Then for the second variable, uh, CI uh, is, is, is a new variable here. For that, for the second equation, CI is a new variable, and NI has been declared, V is a parameter, okay? So we have NC equation and NC variable. NC equation because you have to write this concentration for each component here, okay? Then for this set of reactions, these reactions, they are uh, this set of uh, reaction rate equations, there are four equations there, but there's no new variable because R, the rate, have been, have been captured here. So RK, which means R for each reaction. So R1, R2, R3, R4 are these ones. That is, and then C has been captured as well, CI here. So this CI is basically C, A, C, B, C, C. C, D, and C, E, to so all captured here, okay? So if you perform the degree of freedom analysis, then the number of variables and the number of equations, so you have, uh, because you have two NC plus four and two, N, two NC plus NR. So NR is four. Here we can substitute the four there and that gives us zero, okay? Um, so, So let's see how we can solve this in GPROMS. And here is the model in GPROMS. So the variable types have been created here. The model here, I call it reactor. So here I define the parameters, NC, which is the number of components that I have, NR, number of reaction. K is the reaction rate constant. It's an array of the number of reaction because I have it for each reaction. 
stoichiometric coefficient i have that for each component in each reaction so that is why we have two arguments specified in the, within the array then the volume has rain then I have these variables so have the mole is an array of number of components remember it is n i in the in the model um then r we have the rate for each uh, reaction so remember it's r k so for each reaction and the concentration for each component all variables must be connected to the respective variable types here okay right here then the equation so i have for the first equation which is the the mole balance then the time derivative of the of the mole for each component so this for loop goes through um each component so this is for each component for component one up to component nc which is five in this case then and volume multiplied by sigma times new i so this is i for component i then in all the reaction because sigma needs to operate on an array so i have to do this so that's why i cannot specify two for loops here for so that one goes through component and the other goes to reaction so we, i can can't do that if i do that um because for loops will it will take each the, the nested for loop will take each um not its stoichiometric coefficient at one at a time so then which would not be feasible because because sigma needs to operate on an array so that's why we can leave this open as well so without specifying anything it will still work the equivalent in g prompt but i like to be explicit then rate as well one two number of reaction because rate is also r k and k i've not specified any loop for k here so that's why i have to do this then um rate so we are rate one equals k1 multiplied by c1 times c2 rate two that r2 equals k2 times c3 squared times c4 and that that's all the rates that given in the problem statement then for the concentration remember i see i so i need the for loop to go through uh, each component so i will do calculate the con the concentration for each component so that's why I need a for loop here. So CI times volume equals NI. So I rearrange the equation here to, have, to avoid division because sometimes you can have division by zero uh, error. So it's, it's possible we can rearrange the equation to avoid the division to that state. Now let's go to the process. How do we run it? So in the process, I first I created a copy of that reactor model. So I call it R101 and set the parameters. So the number of components as five, the number of reaction four. So that's what we have. Then the K, we have K for each reaction. So we specify that within this uh, square bracket. So this for the first reaction, the second reaction, the third reaction, and for the fourth reaction. And for this, the stoichiometric coefficient, remember it's, it's depends on two, it has two arguments. So basically um, uh, you need to, to specify it in GPROMs, you can slice um, the the table. So it's, it's a table. You can stay on uh, the column and specify all the rows. So I stay on column one here, specify all the rows. So I've not, I didn't put anything here. That means GPROM will expand it. So GPROM knows that, okay, do it for all the rows. So stay on second column, specify all the rows. Stay on third column, specify all the rows and stay on fourth column, specify all the rows. And this is the volume. Then the initial condition are uh, provided here. So for the differential variable N I have in the model, remember I have dollar sign N, I need to provide the initial condition. So for each component, okay? So at the beginning, initially we have 1.5 mole for A, 1.2 mole for B, it's no, no C, no D and no E. So because these are products. So Okay, so we run the, the model. So what do we have? Then we expand the result case file, the trajectory, our one one variable. Then C, then here is the profile. So there is no, then plateaus very quickly. Okay, so perhaps because the value of the rate constant are small. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you find it useful. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button 
to get notified of my new video. So if you find this video useful, give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.